everyone, Heather Stamper here again for video two, two of my journey into Camp NaNoWriMo and in my writing adventure. Thank you for joining me today. If you like what you're seeing, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and give it a like so that you can um, help support the channel. That's the best way you can. And if you click the little ding-a-ling notifications bells, you will always know when I upload. My goal is twice a week, but you know, life happens, so we shall see. All right, so today's video is going to be all about uh, the drawings, the character sketches that I have, and I've been working on them. Now, I don't have a whole bunch of highfalutin fancy equipment here, but... I use PowerPoint and I use the drawing tools from there because I'm a teacher and yeah, we make do. Okay, so here's my drawings. I have Hilda here at various ages. Here she is about six or seven. This would be around 20 to 25 where the majority of her story takes place. And here she is. Uh, later on, I'm not going to specify an age there. Uh, she has a very stern expression on her face as a child because she was raised by her grandma, who was the head chef at the palace, and there was a lot of pressure on her. Here, as, as she got older, she pulls her hair back. Um, you'll notice that she's got these little blotches on her face and neck. Um, that's from grease burns uh, throughout her um, her cooking career. She's got her apron on, you know, kind of a drabish wardrobe. You know, it's like you don't have to win any beauty pageants if you're going to be a chef. Okay. And then we have her after she moves out to the forest. And she ends up being exiled there. Um, she gets pretty weathered, her hair really lightens. She loses a lot of weight because she's had to go into kind of like a survivor mode. Um, so I haven't decided what age she's going to be when she meets Hansel and Gretel for the first time. But yeah, it's it, it, it's been a rough time for her. But in all three of these, she's got these piercing green eyes that, you know, study and, and the hide the brain that has that will think up all of these recipes and and so forth so yeah that's hilda this is grandma grandma is a no-nonsense lady she wants what's best for her granddaughter and it, it's not that she doesn't love her but she's tough on her because you know the world isn't going to do her any favors you know after she's gone so she makes her work very hard to try to get her to the point where she could take over for her. And as you can see, she's a very large and in charge lady. You don't mess around with grandma. Um, and of course, you know, it's like having to taste test all the things that she's about to put before the king. Yeah, she's got kind of a more rounded figure there. This is Alexander. Alexander is, you know, kind of a goof. He's very intelligent, but he doesn't quite have all the social norms down. Um, he, he's a little bit flamboyant, a little bit silly at times. Uh, he, but he does know how to cook. Um, if I would could, I would probably put some like steampunk goggles above his uh, above his eyes there. So that, you know, because he's a tinkerer, his dad was a jack of all trades, he tinkered, he cooked, he uh, did performance shows uh, across the, the country, and, and so on and so forth. I kind of designed him after uh, Tamaki from Oran High School Host Club, so if anybody is, um, is a fan of that show, then yeah, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, it's like there's times where he can be very serious and very helpful. And other times you're just like, what planet does this, did this guy come from? He's absolutely nuts. But I like him. I like Alexander. He's, he's a fun, he was a, been a fun character to write about so far. 
And then my final picture I have here, this is Queen Bathilda von Pingling. And she is beautiful, but really mean, okay? Uh, I portrayed her as thin and pale, I mean, to the ridiculous here. I mean, it's just like her hair is almost white. Her skin is very pale. She has no color in her cheeks. And that is partly because she is convinced that she has all of these food allergies. Now she does have a lactose intolerance issue. She does have sensitivities to certain foods, but the list that she gave Hilda at the beginning or, or when she first comes to the castle, you would be surprised if she was able to eat anything at all because she was allergic to, uh, according to her, allergic to nuts and allergic to dairy, allergic to meat. You know, it's like pretty much the only thing she could eat was possets and porridge. Um, and that's not a very sustainable diet. She is very mean. I mean, partly could be because she has been depriving herself. And this is not to say that anyone who struggles with like gluten intolerance or anything like that, I fully support and understand, you know, it's like you got to do what you got to do to take care of yourself. But the, those people who feel that it's kind of a lifestyle choice and make things difficult for others, you know, it's like whether you're a guest at someone's house or when the, you're at a restaurant and it's really not your, what your body needs. It kind of irks me a little bit. So, and I figured, you know, it's like, what's the worst thing uh, for a, a chef, especially one that deals in desserts? Oh, wait, it would be someone who would basically be like a Karen, uh, you know, it's like dictating everything she can and cannot have, whether or not it's actually true. So those are the main characters, the, the queen who makes Hilda's life miserable, Alexander, her sous chef, who's a goof, but a good guy, grandma who shaped her the way she is, and then Hilda herself in her various forms. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And like I said, click like, subscribe, dingling the notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.